It's a me, obscure Mario puzzle game from Japan. Andake Sanju Same Game Daisakusen Mario version <gasps> is a Mario puzzle game released exclusively in Japan. The standard physical cartridge release is extremely rare and valuable, as it was only given to stores as a display item, and to small local tournaments as a prize. The second release was on the broadcast Satellite X, which is the Super Nintendo equivalent of the Sega Mega Modem. The BSX allowed players to save games and content from satellite radio onto small capacity blank cartridges. You have this very large playing field stuffed full of coins, fire flowers, super mushrooms, Yoshi eggs and well, Mario heads. Tapping any set of two or more of them will cause them to explode, collapsing those around it to fill the remaining space. The goal is to destroy every set of items on the game screen, do it and you win fail, and you lose. If you make a mistake, you can reverse it. In fact, you can reverse all the way back to the start. You can reverse as far back as you want. There's a lot of freedom in this game to correct errors. There really isn't much to say about Same Game besides, well, what you see is what you get here. The music is great, but a bit repetitive, and the game is just, well, it's kind of boring. It's hard to think that the company behind franchises such as Bomberman, Adventure Island and Bonk could produce something so boring and empty. There aren't even any unlockables or items to attain. Not that replayability matters with this little curio. I did give it a few goes, about six or seven tries, and I just can't clear them all. I swear I did once, maybe ten years ago, but I can't now. So I'm out, done, dusted. Because this episode would be far too short otherwise, let's take a quick look at another Super Famicom Mario puzzle game, Mario and Wario. In this game, you play as a fairy named Wanda, a pun on wand because that's what she's holding. The game is controlled using the Super Famicom mouse controller, it has no gamepad support. That's why, despite owning the physical cartridge and being able to play other region games on my Famiclone, I cannot actually play this game without an emulator. I don't have an SNES mouse. Yet. The gameplay is relatively simple. Wario obscures the vision of your playable character, Peach, Mario or Yoshi, with a large object such as an eggshell or a bucket. They must then get through a course and reach Luigi. The character walks on their own, getting into all sorts of trouble. This is where Wanda shines, because she can enable or disable platforms, defeat enemies, or knock the character to make them turn around. The replayability in Mario & Wario comes from the stars and other collectibles, as you challenge yourself to get as far as you can and collect as many items as possible. With a difficulty level never too hard, but leaving you just on edge, your motor skills will be tested significantly as you guide the characters through well over 90 stages. The only problem with Mario and Wario is that even with replay value, the game is still quite boring. I couldn't bring myself to get too far in the game, just because it started to drive me mad with its slow moving gameplay. Picking Yoshi makes the game run too fast, and it's easy to make mistakes. And with Peach it's just too slow and you're constantly under threat of the ticking down timer running out. It's a nice concept, but for anybody who might have been new to mice in the early 90s, this game would be difficult for them. Also, the gameplay is just so arbitrary. Click and win, like all those hidden object games. I want something more, and from a game where Mario is going up against his rival, Wario, a completely different genre would have suited better. I dunno. 
If only Mario went up against Wario in some kind of platformer. Oh wait, he did! I guess before Pokemon, Game Freak had to be doing something. But this isn't worth your time. Or money. Getting hold of Mario and Wario is pretty easy. I mean, there's so many copies on eBay, and they're not expensive at all. So if you want to get hold of it, it's not going to be difficult. The question is whether or not you should, isn't it? Language barrier, none. All of the text in both of these games is in English, besides maybe a small amount of Japanese in Undarke Sanju. Samegami. But even then, it's nothing that gets in the way of playing the game whatsoever. Both games make enough sense that anybody could jump in, regardless of whether the text was in Japanese or not. Should you play it? No. Neither Mario and Wario or Undake Sanju. I mean, let's be realistic here. They're puzzle games that have long since been uh, superseded by other better games, and other better games that do what they do, but better. They were fun to take a look at, but they were boring to play. I honestly cannot recommend any game that has made me feel like I'm drifting off to sleep, which both of these games have. Today's episode idea comes courtesy of a Suggestion Ox response. Maybe more games from popular series that aren't or haven't been released in the US. Every time you like, every time you share, every time you're someone who discovers my channel and you subscribe, every time you make a suggestion, you are helping this channel grow and I appreciate it so much. This has been Sushi Bites. Thanks for watching.